This exhibition is a, a sobering reminder of our nation's journey of awakening of HIV and AIDS from fear to hope. But this exhibition also reminds us to look beyond the fear to consider the successes that we have achieved together. It gives me the greatest pleasure now to launch HIV and AIDS 30 years on the Australian story. Thank you. It's um, amazing to see such a lot of history here and remember, you know, the last 30 years in, in image and in even the Grim Reapers here with, with its sickle, which is amazing. In 1982-83, I was with the health minister, Dr. Blewett at the time, the federal health minister, and there was this tiny little problem on the horizon, a little grey cloud that nobody knew much about, but that very quickly went from a very small little cloud on the horizon to a big storm, a big, horrible, ghastly storm. The first and most important thing was that we were completely inexperienced with these sorts of diseases. We knew very little at the start about the virus itself, and so it was very much a learn-as-you-go policy which we evolved here in Australia. What was born out of that was a true partnership of government and affected communities. We were all in the same boat together. Government, community, uh, local government and researchers all realising that we had to work together and that we had to find a solution and we also had to address a number of issues around uh, education, resourcing um, and some um, attitudinal shifts within community around a gay lifestyle. We worked out how to have a partnership which was politically bipartisan, supported by all parties, and that's continued for the whole 30 years, and very few other countries have done that. From the epidemic at a stage where people died fairly quickly after a diagnosis, to the stage now where I've got friends who've been living HIV positive for 30 years has been revolution and a triumph. Well, I think the big challenge is that you really have to educate every generation. It's much more difficult now because the disease has settled into a kind of chronic disease pattern, but we still have to go on and I think we have to do much more in educating the young people about the dangers of AIDS. Well, what is most needed is more money. We know what to do in terms of the uh, strategy. We know what to do in terms of antiretroviral therapy. It's got to be given to people. The problem is young people have no memory of HIV in the 1980s. They weren't born then. But uh, it's very difficult then for parents and other people to say, don't do this, don't have unprotected sex, don't share needles, because they don't know what can really go wrong if you do do those things. But bit by bit around the world, we are getting on top of it. That's the message of hope that we can have.